Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. Hi, I'm Carol Ann Waugh, and I'm in the studios of Quilters Newsletter TV. And I've been invited to demonstrate a little bit of my technique called stupendous stitching. And I'm excited to share this with you. Stupendous stitching is a way to create art and fabric that uses three basic techniques. One is decorative machine stitching, one is couching, and one is handwork. Today, we're going to show you how to do a modern take on stupendous stitching using just the decorative machine stitches in your machine. This is the project that we're going to be working on today. It's a small little pillow with some great modern colors and lots of decorative machine work. The first thing I want to talk about is thread. One of the reasons I love this process so much is that I can get to, to use every single thread in my collection. And I think at this point I have probably have more thread in my collection than I do fabric. So I am very blessed to have worked with lots of different threads. Um, and pretty much you can use anything you like in the top. But in the bobbin, I like to use a, a 60 weight, either invisible thread or um, something that uh, matches the background. So there are lots of uh, companies that make this thread. Uh, there's the bottom line, there's Wonderfill, and one of my favorites, of course, is Sulky. For the top, manufacturers are now using different weights of thread. And you know, for decorative machine stitching, you really want to have a thicker thread. And so I've been experimenting now with thread as uh, heavy as 12 weight. But they make 12 weight, they make 35 weight, they make, this is another 35 from uh, Valdani, which is a hand dyed variegated. This is a 40 weight, but it acts like a 35 weight from uh, essential thread. The ones that are so beautiful for the top of your piece are the rayon threads. They have fabulous sheen. And so I've chosen some rayon thread to work with based on some of the modern um, fabrics that are coming out today. Here's one sample of some modern prints. And you can see that they're using the oranges and the lime green, my favorite color, uh, the light blue, turquoise, and gray. And of course, modern quilters love plain fabric. So <laughs> I chose these four fabrics uh, from Kona Cotton, uh, which is a wonderful, um, wonderful material because it has a very nice tight weave. And when you're working in decorative machine stitching, you want a fabric with tight weave on it. So I coordinated some sulky threads with some Kona cotton to, um, to make my color choices. So once we have our thread uh, chosen, what we want to do is prepare our fabric for our design. So that's what we're going to do next. When I think about designing something for a fabric that I'm creating, there are many ways that you can transfer a design to your fabric. The simplest way for me is always to draw something on a tracing paper because that way if I make a mistake, um, I can erase it <laughs> and it doesn't even show. And if you use a light box and lay your fabric on top of this, you'll be able to trace the lines right on top of your fabric. Because we're going to be sewing over the lines, it doesn't really matter that you, uh, what you use to trace. I use a light pencil to trace and so I'll just make my design right on this top and uh, then I'm ready to iron on interfacing to the back. When you do decorative machine stitching, you need to put interfacing on the back of your piece, otherwise the stitches will tend to bunch up. I like to use Pellon. It's um, a mid-weight to heavyweight fusible interfacing, and uh, this particular one is 931TD, which I find works very well for me. So now we're just going to iron the interfacing to the back and prepare our fabric. 
those of you who know me know that I break rules all the time. I really enjoy it and I like experimenting. So I want you to know that I'm not following the rules uh, that the Pellon company recommends to iron your piece. So um, I just want to alert you to that. This is not a mistake. Uh, I have found this is really the best way for me to prepare my fabric. So fusible interfacing has two sides. It has a glue side and it has a non-glue side. So you want to make sure that you know which side is up and you want your glue side up and your fabric on the top of that. So we're just going to iron lightly the top fabric. We don't want to iron too much because sometimes the interfacing will melt. Ask me how I know that. Okay, so that should be pretty much all you have to do. I just usually see if it falls off the back when I hang it up and if it doesn't, it's good to go. One of the really fun parts about stupendous stitching is actually finding the stitches in your sewing machine. Many quilters use a straight stitch and a zigzag and that's about it, but there are really hundreds of stitches in most machines these days. When you bought your machine, I'm sure it came with some kind of a card or something in your table of contents and manual um, that shows you all of the stitches that your machine can do and what number to program them with. I found that none of these stitches looked anything like the stitches that really came out of the machine. So I decided that what I would do is I would go ahead and stitch out every single one of these stitches. And I made my reference book, which I call a stitch Bible. And when I got to the point of saying, oh, this is the default. I wonder what would happen if I changed the length or the width. I found out I could make more stitches than the manufacturer even had in the machine. So it's always fun to do this process uh, because you're going to be excited when you see all the stitches you can use. Once you have your design on your fabric, it's time to stitch. So the stitch I chose for the first line on my machine is a heavy stitch. It's number 111, but uh, it will be different on your machine. So you really get a chance to choose any stitch you like. You program your stitch and just start. I like to cut off the thread as I start, just to get it out of the way. Also, I'm from New York, so I like to do things fast, so we just pedal to the metal. So let's see how that turned out. It's gorgeous thread. Look at the shine. Well, that's beautiful. I love this. And luckily, through the power of TV, we can finish all of our stitching and you'll see what it looks like. Here is the piece with all four lines stitched. So every time I look at adding another line to a piece that I do, I like to change up the thread and I like to change up the stitch. Um, basically because I like change. So um, let's sew the second line and I want to talk a little bit about how to do that. People always ask me what kind of needle do I use and I have to say I love using a top stitch 14 needle. I find that the large eye makes it easy for the thread to go through and it makes a really smooth stitch. So that's what's in my machine right now. When you start your second line I always like to use the edge of the foot to travel along the edge of the previous line and that way my lines are very even. Okay, so let's cut that off again. I want to also say that if you don't 
try to control the fabric too much, you'll have a better result. So keep your hands away from the needle, away from the foot, and just guide it using uh, the edge of your fabric. Okay, let's see what we have. Gorgeous. Look at that shine. Okay, so I'm not going to demonstrate all uh, sewing all the lines because it's pretty much the same process. Um, but I will show you the different steps that my piece went through to get to the final step. So this is the piece after all the yellow lines have been put in. Then I added lime green. And the final step was orange. And you can see that each of these lines have a different color and a different stitch. The final process was really sandwiching it and quilting it to give it more depth and more interest in my mind. So this is a very simple echo quilting that I did in the corner. And these are seed quilting that I did in the, in the middle. I think it came out pretty well, especially for the modern taste. You can also think of using decorative machine stitches to make quilts. Um, even though this is a pillow, I made four different patches and put them together. And so if you can imagine this bigger, you can imagine a, just a gorgeous quilt out of stupendous stitching. Once you make your fabric, though, you can use it for a lot of different things. Here's a checkbook cover. Here's an eyeglass case. Um, here is a notebook cover. You can also decorate your own jean jackets. And this is just a lot of fun to do. And I've even made shoes <laughs> out of it. And uh, it's, there's just no, no end to what you can do with stupendous stitching. Um, I am a, uh, I have an iPad, so I made my iPad cover. And, um, and my friend Nancy Smith also makes jewelry out of it. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration of Stupendous Stitching. I have a website, www.carolannwa.com, and uh, there are, is more information uh, on my website. And I also teach here in person uh, in Denver, and I also teach online at craftsy.com. And so I want to thank Quilter's Newsletter for inviting me to share my techniques with you. This has been a great deal of fun. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people.